Hey, this is Russell Moore, and this is Reading in Exile, uh, the series where I go through my library here and pull off a book or some books off the shelf to uh, talk about them with you. And one of the books that uh, several people have asked me to talk about because they know how much I love it uh, is this book, Gilead, in uh, Marilyn Robinson's Gilead uh, trilogy. And to try to explain what this book is about to someone who has never read it is not an easy thing to do because there are some books, you know, I, I read all sorts of things. There are some books that have a, sort of a synopsis that you can explain in a sentence or two and everyone gets what the book is about because it's a plot driven uh, sort of book. This isn't like that. Uh, this is about uh, a story that on its own would not sound very interesting to most people. Small town in Iowa in the 1950s with an elderly congregationalist minister with a much younger wife uh, uh, later on in the story and uh, his friend, Presbyterian minister, Jack Bowton. Uh, the, the, the reflections on the generations of this Congregationalist minister's father and his abolitionist uh, activist uh, grandfather, also ministers, uh, the, the, those, those interactions that take place, that's not really what the book is about. What the book is about, it, it seems to me, is this framing of uh, beauty and grace found in the ordinary and found in the ordinary rhythms of life. And I was thinking about that when I pulled this book, uh, book off the shelf. I have two copies here. I have a hard cover that I had read basically when it first came out. And then I had this, um, this paperback that I reread during a very, very dark um, time of my life. And I just needed this book. And I would read uh, a little bit of this book and then I would walk uh, for long periods of time and just sort of digest it. And I keep thinking about some of the things in this book because I find myself, I don't know about you, but um, getting up occasionally to walk in the right socially distancing sort of way uh, but what I find is that um, when I sort of leave the cocoon where I'm working uh, here from home and with my family, uh, I find myself crying, just thinking about all this awfulness, um, this weightiness that's here. And, and so I think this is exactly the sort of book to read in a time uh, like that. Um, so here are just some things, uh, some passages that I would read to you that I think would um, sort of give you a taste of what Marilyn Robinson is doing here. Um, one part uh, says this, now that I look back, it seems to me that in all that deep darkness, a miracle was preparing. So I am right to remember it as a blessed time and myself as waiting in confidence even if I had no idea what I was waiting for. I don't know if you uh, have had experiences like that. I certainly have. And, and to look back at times of deep, deep darkness that one would not want to experience again, but to see them as a blessing time, a time where you wrestled with God and, and limped away. Uh, that, that's one of the themes that shows up here in uh, Gilead. Or this, um, this is one of my favorite uh, passages in this book. This is an important thing which I have told many people and which my father told me and which his father told him. When you encounter another person, when you have dealings with anyone at all, it is as if a question is being put to you. So you must think, what is the Lord asking of me in this moment and in this situation? You know, uh, this comes to mind so often when I find myself getting irritated uh, by someone and um, just maybe somebody's personality or, or, or something else or whatever they're asking of me to stop and just ask that question. What is the Lord asking of me in that moment? And uh, this book 
was one of the things that helped me uh, to see that. Or, or, um, or this, she says this a couple of times. I believe that there are visions that come to us only in memory, in retrospect. And then she says, now remember, this is a preacher. Uh, that's the pulpit speaking, but it's telling the truth. So she she points that out several times that the yeah this is the pulpit speaking. This is um, this is him speaking something that he would have preached, but uh, but that's telling the truth. And then there's the sort of the the ending of the book um, that I think is a good word uh, for all of us right now. There shall yet Old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem and every man with his staff in his hand for every age and the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. That is prophecy, a vision of the prophet Zechariah. He says it will be marvelous in the eyes of the people and so it might well be to people almost anywhere in this sad world to play catch of an evening, to smell the river, to hear the train pass. These little towns were once the bold ramparts meant to shelter just such peace. And um, she, she ends the book um, by saying this. Theologians talk about a prevenient grace that precedes grace itself and allows us to accept it. I think there must also be a prevenient courage that allows us to be brave. That is, to acknowledge that there is more beauty than our eyes can bear, that precious things have been put into our hands, and to do nothing to honor them is to do great harm. And therefore, this courage allows us, as the old men said, to make ourselves useful. It allows us to be generous, which is another way of saying exactly the same thing but that is the pulpit speaking. What have I to leave to you but the ruins of old courage and the lore of old gallantry and hope? Well, as I have said, it is all but an ember now, and the good Lord will surely someday breathe it into flame. Maybe that's exactly what all of us need is prevenient courage, that... um, that working of God that goes before courage when we're still afraid. And maybe that will help us to see, uh, if only in retrospect, those glowing embers of God's grace, not in the big, extraordinary moments, but in those uh, very ordinary things, those moments of gratitude. This, This book will help you see that. Let me know what you'd like us to talk about here on Reading in Exile. Until next time, this is Russell Moore.